um, people that used to be able to to you know possibly own a house in Highland Park or there's there's no way they can now um, I definitely feel that um, you know gentrification is about neighborhood change uh, whether that's for better or for worse and that newcomers come in and others are displaced. Um, so that, that can give a feeling of a loss of community. Let's name one. People being pushed out. Well, that was all set up. Just remember it. Everybody talks about low cost housing. And I've been in this city and my family came out of Chavez Ravine. I can tell you all about low cost housing from the city who says, we're gonna move you all out. We're gonna build low cost housing and you're gonna be able to come in except they never did it. My name is Agustin Herrera. So when you come here, I think to the Palo de Sosa Madrid, and knowing that we have a center, it's like, you know, you're like we're, that we're starting something, that we're starting a different type of movement when we have a space within the schools. And I think to me, the routine and the thinking behind it is like, you start thinking about, but what's the reason that there's an empty classroom within a big public institution? That was never the case. So then you start thinking about the charter schools, right, that are in the communities that are taking students out of public schools. And you think about the space that we have, and it's a very beautiful space. When you come here and you start doing, you know, work for the community, when you open up that door and you're like, you know, hopefully somebody could get a service in, because you never know whose life you could change by oh, just opening the door and by just being present here within the space. You don't know whose life you're affecting indirectly. The thinking at the time was Mexicans cannot assume these positions, cannot be educated, and cannot move into professions. They cannot be trained in that way. Right? They can use their hands. They can be, you know, uh, productive in other ways through vocational education programs. And, and that was the thinking back when they were segregating our community into all Mexican schools, which happened up until 1947. It was the law. It was allowed. It was de jure. You could be put into an all Mexican school because you had a Spanish surname, you were dark skinned, or you spoke Spanish. You know, they profiled you. The schools profiled you and they put you into all Mexican schools. You were labeled emotionally, eh, no, educationally, mentally retarded, EMR. 